What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Jay Renee, with Prison Ryan Radio. I hope that you're doing well. This evening, I got a brother on the phone by the name of Mark. He's currently incarcerated in Louisiana, all right? We've talked before about this 10 and 2 law down there, but we decided to bring it back because it's still in effect, and we want to, you know, make sure more and more people know about it. So let's jump right into it. What's up, bro? Good evening. You there? All right, yeah, good evening. You all right? Yeah, I'm good, man. All right, for sure. Thanks for um, thanks for coming to talk to us more about ten um, the ten two rules, so people know more about it. Um, so let me start like this. How long have you been incarcerated in uh, in a Louisiana prison? Okay, so I've been incarcerated for 26 years now. How have you stayed motivated during that time? For sure. I know that's something to look forward to. Okay. So, um, let's jump right into it. You know, for those that don't know about the 10 and 2, break it down for them, bro. You know, I, I, you're a subject matter expert in that area. So, you know, you, you know, break it down for, you know, in layman's terms so anybody can understand it. Exactly what the 
to do. Orleans Parish has been accepting the 10 2 as being a 99 mystery verdict. And the Fourth Circuit, which is the New Orleans area also, which covers the New Orleans area, they are, um, they are ruling that 99 mystery verdicts are no verdict at all. Well, some of the other circuits are, you know, sticking to it that right. we haven't been told anything different. It's good law. Right. So, by these circuit courts being at odds with each other, the Louisiana Supreme Court has to make a determination. So that's where it's standing at with the Roger Brennan case. That was just recently heard there or argument where uh, Jamila Johnson, mm-hmm. the attorney for Roger Brennan, argues very well in that case. And um, the decision hasn't been passed yet. The state argued only that hey, uh, it's going to cost us too much money um, and resources to retry these cases. And, but they're not really worried about the people who are incarcerated as maybe innocent mm-hmm. you know, or anything. They're not weighing that. And, and that everybody who we come under this ticket tend to as a, a victim of the system itself, you know, being illegal. They're not worried about that. They're worried about the resources to go home. So now, um, and then it also turned to legislative law. They tried to figure that the legislatures were sitting on these bills before them, and you know they asked the court to try to lean that way and let the court, let the legislatures decide. Well, just so happened, I don't think that was a very good argument because they just recently the author of the bill that was in dealing with ninety nine the jury verdict. Mm-hmm. Pulled it out. So I think that was just happening maybe yesterday. So he pulled that bill out. So they won't even hear that bill this session. Mm-hmm. So now it turned back to Louisiana Supreme Court having to make a decision on it. Right. So let me ask you this. Um, you know, when it comes to this ten twenty, it's um it's always presented to me that it is based off of and you know, covered in white supremacy. So can you um can you kind of break that down a little bit more for the listeners of the connection between white supremacy and this ten two? So the, so uh, what it did was jurors have to be selected from a cross section. So the percentage of it and and originally it started as nine three. Uh, you can be found guilty with only nine jurors. That was during the Jim Crow law right. itself. So, it was nine jurors could find you guilty. Nine out of twelve could find you guilty. So what this did was effectively eliminate black jurors. Black jurors only made up less than. Um, I mean, the, the population of a cross section was like less than fourteen percent. So the best you would get on a jury to make it look good was probably only two black jurors. Got you. So now, if you have Right. Right. background of it. It's just, it was 
never, it was always used to just call us the black folk. No, I got you. So let me ask you this. So what can we, the people, do to get involved into this? Is there anything that we can do to assist so we can, you know, eradicate this? Like, what should we be doing? I definitely appreciate you for your knowledge on the subject and being able to break it down so, you know, everybody can get a better understanding on that. Um, we don't got too much more time, so, you know, is there anything else you want to put out to the people? It can be whatever you want. What's going on? Well, that's really just a, a focus, you know, um, it's just uh, that, you know, as far as a, uh, that's what everybody is looking at right now. Well, I definitely appreciate you, Mark, for taking the time to, you know, step away from what you got going to talk to us more about this. And I, uh, you know, put out to my my advocates and and activists and social justice seekers to pay attention to this 10 too and get actively involved in it. But again, I definitely appreciate you, bro, for taking this time to getting us up on, getting us, putting us up on game with what's going on down in Louisiana. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time out to, 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 to give this out to your people and everything. Hey, man, 